Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's a gray and rainy morning here in Sweden. And uh, seems a bit gray around the world, I have to say. But we'll see how things develop. So today I thought I would talk a bit about the JavaScript engine that I started building a week ago now. And uh, just to update a little bit on it and reflect a little bit, I guess. So uh, in the last week, we've brought up LibJS from absolutely nothing to a um, very, very simple um, parser, interpreter, uh, garbage collector, and a little bit of runtime stuff. And it's, it's really fun to, to see it sort of coming to life and get flushed out. And I've just been running all over the place trying to fill in the little things that seem like these, um, uh, the building blocks that enable us to stand on top of them to build the next layer of blocks and so on. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm just doing this thing where I'm setting up the scaffolding so that we can build really tall and that's, for example, why I wanted to get um, the garbage collector in early so that we can start to build uh, garbage collected objects and things like that. And it's really fun so far and super educational. And I got a lot of really nice pull requests coming in from a whole bunch of people. So thank you everyone who, who worked on it together with me so far. Because uh, I was keeping pretty good pace, but then, then you guys started helping out, and the pace just uh, just increased so much, and that's really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is really um, confirming my suspicion, by the way, that that I don't know JavaScript that well, and despite being around WebKit, and I've done many optimizations in JavaScript core. Uh, in the past, many, many of them, but I never knew enough about it, um, about the engine or the language, really, to tell you exactly how to implement it or to write any non-trivial JavaScript. So now that I have to engage with it at the most basic level, I'm finally, finally forced to learn JavaScript properly. And it, it, like I didn't even know how var and let worked and stuff like that. I'm um, just learning it this week. So thank you everyone, by the way, for, for all the comments and stuff that you've been leaving on the videos, like telling me what something is or, or how something works. That's been super helpful because I find the um, the JavaScript specification and the the ECMAScript stuff, right, like it's, it's kind of obtuse and not so readable and I don't know what it is. It just doesn't mesh with me, so... Um, just talking to people and uh, seeing sort of examples of ASTs and like, oh, this code becomes that AST, and that's the sort of thing that makes it click in my head. But everybody's different, but that's been really cool. So thanks everyone for commenting. Um, so one thing I've noticed uh, since I've been working on this is that I have a lot of like latent JavaScript core patterns in my brain that I sort of am not even aware of, because when I implement some things in LibJS now, then it sort of comes out the, um, the JavaScript core way. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I guess it's just uh, stuff I've absorbed, um, you know, through osmosis or whatever. Um, but it's, it's interesting, because if, if I think about, like, why am I doing it this way, then it takes me a moment to work out, like, why am I doing it this way? And an example of that is that it seems perfectly logical to me to try to make various things um, garbage, uh, GC allocated, right? <clears throat> so primitive strings, native functions, um, to make these things GC allocated. And um, I had to think so much about why that is. And uh, one of the big reasons in JavaScript core that you want things to be GC allocated is because then you can, um, the, the JIT, or the various JITs, know how to allocate from the garbage collector, right? So they can do very fast assembly code uh, to uh, allocate from the, from the GC heap. So they would just do like, a, like, you know, a couple of instructions for the uh, bump and pop stuff. So 
uh, that makes a lot of sense there, but in the case of libjs, since we're always in C++ context anyway, that's less of a concern at the moment, but, but I just sort of assume that, oh yeah, it makes sense, everything um, could be uh, GC allocated because that will simplify allocation. And this is just some kind of a thing in my head that's um, an uncontested truth until now when I start to think about why is that. So it's interesting. Um, and likewise about strings. So I made strings uh, GC allocated and then Sergey asked me, like, what's up with that? And I, it, it just seems so obvious to me, but of course it's not obvious <laughs> to anyone else that um, I want to make uh, rope strings. So uh, rope strings are, <clears throat> if you're not familiar, it's this uh, thing where um, it's sort of an optimization where you turn strings into binary trees and then um, like a string is a string, but then if you concatenate two strings together, instead of creating a new buffer that's the combined size of both strings and then um, s sort of flattening the string into that buffer, um, you instead start building a tree. So um, a concatenation operation, instead of being a uh, linear time thing, it becomes, um, I guess, O log n because you're just inserting into a binary tree. Uh, and you can probably do even better with uh, <clears throat> if you have some additional constraints, like you're only appending and things like that. And um, that's uh, going to be that's going to make it necessary for a, a GC allocated string to refer to other strings and so on. And that's why it totally makes sense to to GC allocate them. But I had to really think about why do I want this and. That's fun. It's, it's really fun to, to do this. And I can tell that when I'm writing code, uh, a lot of stuff just comes out. Uh, it just comes out of my head. And I have to think about why it comes out that way. Same thing with the garbage collector, um, which came out kind of very inefficient and a lot of redundant work in the first pass. And then uh, people were commenting on it, like, hey, like, isn't this unnecessary? Can't you just do this and that instead? And it will be way less passes over the heap. And, and these are all good points. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's really good. They're really good with the continuous feedback that I get on this channel. And I don't know, I've never had this experience before, so uh, let's keep it going, because it's super interesting. Um, and I have to say, it seems like people are really interested in this JavaScript engine stuff, because uh, getting a very strong response, strong interest. But uh, rest assured, I am definitely not uh, abandoning <laughs> the other videos. I just uh, I do this thing that I always do, where I get really into something for a while, and then do that, and then get into something else for a while, and then do that, and and it all it all cycles around eventually. <laughs> But in, in uh, good news is that uh, the project is growing and attracting more people. So while you see me working on the JavaScript engine, there's actually people doing all kinds of other interesting stuff in the code base at the same time. So uh, there's stuff happening in the kernel uh, with ACP. There's stuff happening in Hack Studio with uh, C++ syntax highlighting and very uh, cool patches going on there right now. Uh, and super awesome work by um, everyone doing those different things. And there's there's new games, new apps happening, uh, a lot of stuff. So uh, it's really cool. And it's going to be a lot to talk about in the next monthly update. So looking forward to that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad to be doing the JavaScript engine. Uh, to be honest with you, it's... Um, something that's always kind of intimidated me to work on because I don't know why I think um, I always felt like oh this is something that's going to be actually difficult unlike everything else I do which I first think is actually difficult and then I start doing it and it's fine this was like the most persistent one so far um, and as always it's just a matter of getting started because then you realize hey this is not so bad right and it's been really, really great hearing from so many people that they're saying, oh, since I saw you start working on the JavaScript engine, um, 
it shows me that it's not so bad. <laughs> so it's not only me learning that it's not so bad, but apparently other people can sort of get that same understanding from seeing me do it. So it's a win-win, it seems like. Very, very good. Anyway, um, these, I guess, were just some thoughts on that. So we're definitely going to keep pushing forward with LibJS. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit away. It's, it's not quite ready to start, start um, binding it to the browser just yet. But it will be exciting when we get there. It's going to be real fun. And, um, but there's, there's so much else to do before that. But I think we're, we're building it in a very nice way. Uh, we're getting, making it possible to uh, sort of, we're setting up all the foundation so that then you can go and work on uh, individual bits and pieces without disturbing the whole so much. So I think it will be really good when we get to a place where if you felt like it, you can go and implement stuff in the math object, or you could go implement string prototype functions or array prototype functions or whatever, right? And um, you could go and work on that in isolation without needing to mess with the whole engine. So that's where I would like to get to because that will make it much easier to sort of parallelize the work. But we're not quite there yet, but we will get there. So uh, I guess thank you again to everyone who's been helping out on it because it's super fun and I hope you're having fun too. And I hope that the videos so far have been interesting. And um, yeah. <laughs> and I guess I should say hello to all the new subscribers because a lot of people showed up when they heard that we were doing a JavaScript engine. So um, if you're here because of that, then uh, don't be afraid when we suddenly start hacking on the kernel. Uh, that's just something we also do here. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks everyone for hanging out with me on the commute. And let's go have a good Friday, and I'll see you next time. Bye.